We have made it halfway through our Lightning Literature Grade 4 curriculum, and so I want to tell you the pros, the cons, and if we're going to continue using it. Hi, I'm Stacy with Kids Learning for Life, and I've been using Lightning Literature Grade 4 with both of my kiddos currently in 4th and 5th grade. Why did I use the same level for both kiddos? Well, I basically asked them, hey, do you guys want to use this curriculum and be reading the same exact books? Or would you guys rather read different books? And they both said, we'd love to read the same books at the same time. So I chose the fourth grade so that that way my fourth grader wouldn't be too challenged with the reading material. After doing reviews myself and trying to figure out if this curriculum was gonna be right for us, I did find that some people would say that it's a little higher on the, on the challenging end. So with my boys, um, my fourth grader, I didn't want him to be like too challenged. So I decided to just bring my fifth grader down and the level seems to be working out just fine. When using lightning literature, all you need is the student workbook, the teacher's guide, and for fourth grade, you will be needing 12 books. So we'll go into these a little more detail in a bit. But that's all you need for this curriculum. Everything is all in here, so you don't need a bunch of extra stuff. Lightning Literature is gonna cover your reading and reading comprehension, as well as grammar and mechanics, which includes sentence diagramming. And then the last thing it will cover is composition. For the composition, you definitely need the teacher's guide since that is the only location where the information is given. Um, the student workbook does not include any reference to the composition assignments. It's all going to be in your teacher's guide. All right, so let me jump in and show you what a week would look like in the student and teacher guide for the next book that we're going to be reading is The Dreamer. All right, so here's the Lightning Literature Grade 4 Teacher's Guide. So in the beginning, it is important to note that there is some, um, like how to use this teacher's guide. I did read through this. It did help a little bit. Um, just in understanding everything. Um, you don't have to, but I did find it helpful. And then each one's going to have this week at a glance. So I'm actually going to jump ahead to the week we're on because we're about to start the dreamer. So we are on week 19 and it tells you what the book is and it gives some materials and just kind of a checklist for you to make sure you have everything you need. Um, then when you open it up, it has day one and it has the literature. It gives you any information you may need, tells you what the day's reading is. So again, one through 23 of the dreamer. I found that it, the way it's broken up, I don't feel like it's too much for my kids in any one day. So they have been motivated to read because it's, they don't feel like, oh my gosh, I have so much reading to do. And then when they finish, there's comprehension and this gives you answers and then answers for the grammar and mechanics as well. Lastly, here's that composition section, which is not in the workbook for the students. And then day two, it'll describe it. Now, the biggest drawback for the composition is just that there's not a ton of information here for you. And so I have heard other people say that they felt like the, they couldn't incorporate the composition themselves. I have not incorporated the composition, but it was more to a time-based thing. I was super excited to get my kiddos started on their work workbook and they do everything that's in their workbook. Um, but we have a building writer's curriculum by Handwriting Without Tears that I use in place of the composition right now. Just because my main goal was to get my kids reading and the writing I'm covering somewhere else and something else that's very open and go and doesn't require me as much. Um, just what worked in our schedule this year. So. Um, I have not done the composition to know if it's great or not, so I can't speak to that. Um, moving on, um, it has day two, and then it, again, the reading, the grammar, and the composition. Then you're going to move on to day three, reading, grammar, composition. Day four, reading, grammar, composition. Day five is always kind of a free day, which is my favorite part about the curriculum is it is on a four day schedule, which is amazing. <laughs> my kids love it. It allows us to, um, I have it worked into our schedule where I'm gonna do science and history on Fridays instead of doing lit and reading and everything. And then it'll move on to week 20. So for the dreamer, we're still reading the dreamer. The dreamer is actually three weeks long. So again, any answers you need, and then it'll move on to week 21. Again, still working on the dreamer. Day one, day two, day three, all very similar. And then the main uh, week four, I'm sorry, it's four weeks. 
there's finally a literature discussion. So this is the thing at every single, at the end of every book, you get to sit down and kind of just have a discussion with your kiddos. And you discuss theme, story, characters, setting, external details, internal details, conflict, and symbolism, if there is any in the book. Um, and then since we're you know, only on day four, you're gonna have even a few more, wait, hold on, that says day four. Day two, that's supposed to say day three. <laughs> I was about to say, I'm confused. And then here's day four, and then day five. And then it'll jump right into the next book. So let me hop over to the student workbook so you can see what that looks like. So the student workbook at the very beginning has the table of contents of all of the different stories you're gonna be reading and how long, oops, how long it will take for, how many weeks you're gonna spend on that book. So I was very happy, like at the beginning, they start out with some short stories. The One and Only Ivan is a thick book, but again, short. So it kind of eases your kiddos into the program if you're worried about that. And here's a quick peek of all the different stories that we are reading this year. So The Earth Dragon Awakes is a San Francisco earthquake story, and it's two kiddos in different classes that it follows each kiddo to see how they survive the earthquake. Next is Warning Girl, and this is stories of this girl and her Native American family, all um, leading up to the very end where she meets some European settlers. And so it's kind of just her life before um, European settlement, and then that's where it ends. The One and Only Ivan is a cute story about a gorilla who's living the circus life, but then when he meets Ruby, he really wants to make sure she doesn't um, live and die in the circus like it feels like he is. Next up is Gone Fishing, which is a novel in verse. This was really interesting. I am not a poetry fan, but this was a bunch of different poems, but they all followed this boy and his sister and dad on their fishing trip. So each one will say what kind of poem it is. This is a prayer poem. This one is, if I can find another one, a ballad. Then they've got different free verse. And so it's just really cool how even like all of the poems are their own story but then they all fit into one giant story so that was really cool next is where the mountain meets the moon which is about a girl that um wants to change her family's fortune so she goes on this adventure the family under the bridge is about a young family and their mom and they're on hard times and so they're having to live out on the streets and this is set during christmas time in paris and um they befriend an old old hobo which is what they call he calls himself in there and um they they go on this adventure together next up is nim's island which is a girl who lives on an island with her father um and they do have some technology and she her dad goes off on a trip and a storm keeps him from coming back and the girl ends up befriending um a writer over the over email next is the dreamer and this book i've only read a chapter in so for the rest of these books, we have I have not read them, so I can't give you a full synopsis here, but this is about a boy in Chile, and that's all I know. Next up is Love That Dog, which is another one that has a lot of poetry in it, but it does kind of look like the it's all going to be like one story in the end, so that's cool. The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, um, don't know much about that one. Tuck Everlasting, a good classic, and then The Borrowers, another good classic. And that is how we're going to finish out our year. So then we have the actual cover page just to let you know you're on the Dreamer now. And the students have their own checklist where it will give them everything they're doing for the week. Again, here's that reading. It tells them what pages to read and then gives them questions and enough space to answer. And then the grammar, they can read it on their own or you can go over it with them and then there's some sort of activity usually. And then we move on to day two. They read, answer the questions, do the grammar. Um, more grammar here. Day three, read, answer the questions, do the grammar. And here we're learning about metaphors and different things like that. And then day four, read and do the grammar. And again, there is no day five because this program works on a four day schedule. Then it moves on to the next week. Now that you've had a peek inside what the student workbook and teacher's guide looks like, I did want to share one of my favorite parts about the curriculum was I found that as we were reading through the books, the books 
the topics of the books matched up perfectly with what was going on in our real life. So um, around Thanksgiving, we were reading Where the Mountains Meets the Moon, and this book has a main theme of just all about thankfulness and being thankful for what you have. So I loved that that tied up with Thanksgiving. And then The Family Under the Bridge is all about a um, orphan family, not orphan, sorry. They are just a family that is on hard times and they're gonna live under a bridge, but it all happens during Christmas time in Paris. So again, I loved that those lined up and it just made the books even more fun and relevant to what we were doing in real life. Another pro for this curriculum is I loved how, you know, some of the books were really short and then some of them, even though they were long, like this one here, there's a lot of pictures. It's like big font, lots of spaces. So even though it's longer, if it was, you know, written out like the family under the bridge, which still has pretty big font, um, it wouldn't quite be so many pages. Same thing with the one and only Ivan. There were some pages on here that are just, you know, a couple. Where are they? Here, here's like one of the first ones, hello. So the first page was really short. So my kiddos saw this book and almost like, we're like, oh my gosh, that's such a big, big thing. But then once they started opening up and reading it, it wasn't as intimidating. So that was one thing I have found that the books are just really good for younger readers, readers that are just getting into, you know, being able to read chapter books on their own. I just loved how it, all the books were not intimidating and have started to make my kids really enjoy reading. And lastly, I cannot stress enough how important it was to me that I found a curriculum that was very open and go, that had everything for me. I have been trying for years to do some sort of like literature novel and then have my kiddos do assignments, but I just found that I didn't have time to create it all. So this curriculum has already done that for me and even breaks it in the student workbook, breaks it down day by day. So it makes it really easy for me to follow. It makes it easy for my kiddos to know exactly what they're doing every day. So they can just open up. I say, hey, get your lit out. And they know, go to whatever week we're on, on whatever day. And they know how they, we've done this enough now for the first half of the year that they know how to do this without me having to say anything. One con for me is the fact that the composition is only in the teacher's manual. Now I understand why because it's definitely something that is meant to be taught by the teacher, not something that the kiddos are just gonna magically open up and know how to do. But it would be nice if there were pages that were incorporated into the student guide, maybe you know even blank pages where they could write their brainstorming or even rough drafts and things of that nature. Um, but the other con I found, which is maybe why the composition is not included into the student workbook, is because the student workbook is so large. Like this thing is, you know, a lot of pages. So by adding that in, that might, you know, hinder that. One good thing is that the pages are perforated. So if you did want to tear these out week by week and kind of give them to your students that way, that would work. We, I've just been having my kiddos work out of the book. Um, it hasn't been too cumbersome. So that way I don't have to remember to tear up pages every week. So those are my two cons, which kind of count, count, contradict each other. But um, yeah, that's about all I could find with this curriculum that was a negative. So this should come as no surprise, but we are definitely gonna be continuing our lightning literature curriculum through the end of the year. And I've already got plans to have both my kiddos start on grade five next year. So until I can find something either A, better, or B, something wrong with this that's not working for our family, we're gonna keep on chugging along. If lightning literature sounds interesting to you, but grade four is not the level you're looking for, you can check out Jenny's reviews over here of lightning literature grades one and two. See you next time and happy homeschooling.